All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble <clears throat> this HP Spectre X360 convertible model 13T-AP000. All right, so I haven't worked on this model before, at least I don't think I have. So let's see if I can figure it out. Most likely there's a bunch of screws under both of these rubber feet. So let's go ahead and try and remove those. I'm just going to kind of use my fingernail in this gap. Let me see if I can zoom in here to kind of show you guys. I'm just going to use my fingernail in the little gap here in this rubber piece. And I'm just going to try and pull it out. Okay, I know it's uh, I can't really show this well on camera. But uh, basically just getting my fingernail in there. And then we're just getting under so we can peel this up. Okay, so you can see we are peeling this up. Let's see, where are the screws? Oh, there's an extra plastic piece here that didn't want to come up. Oh man, now that rubber piece kind of tore a little bit. Let's see if I can get underneath it with a really small flathead screwdriver. You can see they actually make these little um, holes here for the rubber piece to kind of rest in as well. So I'm using that to kind of get under with the flathead screwdriver. And there's a really small flathead screwdriver that I'm using. Okay. I might have to use two flathead screwdrivers because I have to use something to hold it up and then go under the side here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now that we got under, we can go ahead and get this up. Man, I thought that was already lifting up the right spot. I guess I was wrong. So now we can hopefully get this black plastic piece out. There we go. Okay. So that's what we have to remove actually. So let's see if I can put this thing back in there. I mean, this computer is actually, um, the customer said it's dead. It's not turning on, and they mainly just wanted their data. Um, but usually I like to try and keep things intact as much as possible. So let's go ahead and zoom out here a bit and peel this up just like this. Okay, so basically we were pulling up the black plastic layer. Okay. And as you can see, this thing's not lined up right now. So I'm going to try and line up the little hole with that again and see if I can hopefully flatten this rubber piece back out because it kind of got stretched a little. All right. And there we go. Okay. So we're going to set that aside for now. Next, we're going to go ahead <coughs> and do the same thing with the bottom one down here. It looks like we're going to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver most likely. You do want to check if your screwdriver gets a tight fit. You don't want to just go based off what I'm using because sometimes your screwdriver set might be a little off. And yeah, um, if you want to get the accurate ones, I've been using the iFixit ones. I can send you a link for the set I used for the bits. I kind of mixed multiple sets of screwdrivers, but the bits from the iFixit actually hold up really well. And that's why I've kind of been using those. Okay, so we got this rubber side up. We're going to have to get underneath as well. Because as you can see, uh, the rubber is separating from this black plastic layer. Man, I hate this. It's I made it so difficult to separate this thing. Okay, there we go. I might have to... Okay, there we go. Peel up the corner like that. And then once you get that, you just pull by the black plastic, not the rubber. Okay, and then we should be able to peel it all up just like that. All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and it allows me to continue making these videos for a living. It does look like we're going to need a PH1 or JS1 as well as a PH0, JS0 screwdriver. So let's go ahead and remove the screws back here using the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. You want to keep them in order <coughs> because they can be different size, shape, and length. Oh my God. <clears throat> so the way you do that, flat side down like this, in the pattern you remove them. We got four back here. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's all stuffed up now, so. <clears throat> Maybe I need a lozenge or something. But anyways, we'll get those four screws out. The two middle ones here are shorter than the two outer ones. Keep that in mind in case you mix them up. Hopefully that'll help. All right. We're going to remove the two screws here. There's one on each corner. We did switch to a PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. So let's go ahead and remove those two screws. And hopefully this cover is not going to be too difficult to remove. All right. Give me a second. I'm getting a message on my phone. Okay. All right. Give me a second. I'll be back. 
All right, I'm back. So we're gonna try with a suction cup first because hopefully that's gonna work. And it looks like it might be. It pulls up more from the back, the front. <clears throat> because it only has two screws, I was assuming the clips down here would be a lot stronger. So let's go ahead and see if we can pop this up from the back. Usually what I have to do is I kind of have to hold the top down so when I lift it, it pulls it up like this. And that curling motion kind of pulls the clips away. And also sometimes the um, plastic part for the hinge here goes down into there. So you kind of need to pull it in a certain way. So let's see if that's going to work or not. It's being quite difficult. Oh, it looks like we just pulled it up like that. Okay, so I guess we didn't have to bend it this time. So just going across like that and pulling up. If you don't have a suction cup, you can use pieces of tape where you kind of like have them meet like this and then you can use that as a pull tab. You might have to have it so that the pieces go this way and then meet in the middle here so you can pull more in a line across here. The only thing is <clears throat> there's this air vent grate there that might make that difficult. Anyways, we got this open. Um, <clears throat> customer said this wasn't turning on at all, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I don't really see much in here that's replaceable. Um, this looks like the SSD here. <clears throat> We're going to open it up and check. I'm just going to do a quick check. The customer wanted me to transfer their data to an uh, external drive, um, so I'm technically not going to be fixing this. Um, but if it is something simple, I might as well check it and try. Okay, there's three screws here holding the battery in place. <clears throat> um, and then there's two down here as well. So we're going to remove all five screws. Okay, once we get all five screws out, we're going to go ahead and see what's going on. Okay. All right, anyways, you got the HP spare part number here. Sorry, it's, I know it's like you can't even see that. L28764-005, and then the battery SP04XL. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and see about getting this battery up. This um, speaker connector is in the way. If you're wondering the way you get the speaker connector up, let me zoom in here. Um, it is a little bit tricky, and there is some risk of damage here. Let me see if I can kind of... What, what happened to my little plastic pick? Oh, here, it's hiding under stuff. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna get a very thin tool underneath between these wires here, okay? And then you kinda just poke in between that, and then from there you can kind of lift it, but let's see if that's gonna work. It doesn't wanna come up. All right, if that doesn't work, we might have to just go straight from the back edge of the antennas, or not the antennas, the wires, and then kinda pop it up that way, but wow, this is holding in super strong. Oh, let me see. Is this a different design here? No. That's weird. It doesn't want to come out. Okay, let's try with this. I'm going to get the corner edge of this in, and then I'm going to twist it to try and pry it up. Wow, that's holding in really strong. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so as you can see, in this little connector down here, there's a little groove that this can go a little bit deeper than the plastic around the side edges. And the reason that is, is so when you get the tool in there, it kind of slowly pushes up under the connector and then you can kind of just pop it out like that. I don't know why this was so hard to remove though. Anyways, let's go ahead and zoom back out. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and get this out. So we're gonna go with the connector here and then grab the wings and wiggle this to pull it out. Oh, oops, I should have probably zoomed in more, but my the screws are in the way, so. Anyways, you just kind of grab that and wiggle it. You can't pull it out completely because there's not much slack. Oops, let's zoom out again. So what you're going to do after you wiggle it out a little, we're going to lift the battery up from back here, I think. Let's see, is there anything else I'm missing? Uh, okay. Um, hopefully we can lift it up now. It's kind of stuck on something. So we're going to go around, move the speaker cable around there. We're going to slowly, carefully continue lifting this up. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, man. Okay, maybe I think they spilled something. I think they said they spilled something on here. Yeah, and that's why it's dead. Okay, so... Yeah, normally it wouldn't stick to it, or it shouldn't stick to it. Um, but they spilled some liquid in here, and that's why this computer is toast. And that's why they actually brought it to me to check if their data is recoverable. It looks like the power button is right here if you wanted to remove that. There's one screw. I'm not going to pop it out. Um, there's the cable here. Um, got the cable here for... Is that for the audio jack? 
I don't know if that's actually for the audio jack or not. Is there something inside here? Uh, it might be for the audio jack. Anyways, I don't want to mess around with this too much because the customer, if something looks weird, they're like, what? Um, but this is the touchpad cable, all right? Um, and then the other speaker connector here. Um, I mean, if I did take things apart, I probably won't cause any other damage to it. But, uh, yeah, the customer, if they see or something, they'll be like, what, like, why'd you do this? Anyways, we got the other screw here. We're going to at least pull out the SSD because they want to try and get their data off. And hopefully there's no liquid damage in there. We got that screw out. We got this metal plate. You can kind of wiggle and lift this. I hope it's not damaged. Is this being held in? Oh, this metal plate is being held in with clips, just like on some laptops, they have like RAM, RAM things. All right, so I'm going to have to pop this metal plate up somehow. Wow, that's holding on there tight. So I'm trying not to like twist the thing off. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we lifted that up and then this plate goes all the way across. Um, I think we can actually leave the SSD down for now. We're going to get underneath here. And then we're going to kind of pop and twist this out. Yep. All right. Then go over here. And there we go. And that's, I don't know why they cover it. There's no thermal pad or anything on here. So that's kind of weird. Hopefully their SSD is okay. This is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. In case you're wondering, that's what it looks like. All right. I'm going to basically be putting this in an enclosure here. So I have this enclosure that I'm going to put the SSD into. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping yourself grounded, especially if you live somewhere where there's a lot of static. All right, we're going to put it in slightly at an angle like this, just like how you would in the normal slot. Okay, all right, so just like that. And then once you get that in, we're going to lower this down. And this one is nice because you don't have to use any tools and we just twist it and it holds that in place. All right, anyways, this isn't really part of the repair video because I'm just going to be... Um, testing that with my computer and then transferring data to it. Anyways, let's zoom out here. Uh, what else we got? If you're curious, this is a keyboard backlight connector, keyboard connector, trackpad connector, if I didn't already mention those. Um, I don't see much else to do in here. That's not gonna like cause like lots of stuff to get all messed up and out of place. Um, let's see here. You got another speaker cable here, it looks like. And, oh, this stuff is peeling off too easily. Wireless card is soldered to the motherboard, which sucks. You got this connector here, which I'm assuming is for like the camera or maybe touchscreen. Then you got the fan connector here. This one pops up. This one kind of, you have to grab the connector and kind of wiggle it to pull it out like the battery. Um, this one's like the other speaker. What else we got here? All right, and we got the LCD LVDS connector here, and it looks like another speaker connector. Okay, so this laptop has like four speakers in it. Anyways, that's about it. I'm going to test the SSD, and then once I confirm it's okay and I can get everything, I'm going to start reassembling. But the SSD, I do need to pull the data out. So, um, yeah, I guess the next time you see me, this is probably going to be the next day that I'm putting this thing back together. I'll leave it out here for now. And yeah, I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye. All right, so it turns out their uh, SSD has BitLocker on it, and it's like, what time is it right now? Daylight savings added an hour, so it's 5, 12 a.m. Um, should be 4, 12 a.m., but added an hour, so 5, 12 a.m. All right. Um, anyway, so we're going to just put this back together. Uh, pretend that we put the SSD back in. It goes in at that angle, and then you put it back down just like before. Okay. And then what we're going to be doing, uh, it's kind of, I mean, not like it's going to be working again. So anyways, let me clean it a little bit. I don't know that dust is kind of permanently stuck there. Okay. Anyways, once you put the SSD back in, we're going to put this metal plate back on. Um, and just like the RAM ones, the only weird thing is there's no, nothing for it to clip on from this side so you want to get this side lined up first okay it goes in between there's two um clips that it goes there's like parts that clamp in between okay then we're gonna slide this and make sure to get this all lined up all right it's a little bit tricky hopefully you guys can see what i'm doing now that it's lined up you can kind of just push it into place and it should hold itself there so just like that you can see it's no longer coming out 
All right, uh, we're gonna put the screw back in there. This is a PH0JS0, just in case you didn't know. We'll tighten that screw back down. Sorry, I know my hand's blocking the entire way. Let's go ahead and zoom out again. Get that there. Okay, battery, flip that back over. Make sure this thing goes underneath the speaker cable. All right, just like that. We'll drop this back in. Um, tricky part, because again, there's not much slack there. We're gonna have to actually Lift the battery back up, get it a little bit out of the way, push this in while we're getting this into place, pinch this thing back together. There we go, lined up, get the battery, it's good. All right, and let's get all these screws back in. All right, so we'll get that and that and that. All right, and this one. And then we'll get the two down here into place. And there we go. All right, now that we got all five screws in, we're gonna get this into place. Let's zoom in here. All right, so now that we got that in, we're gonna just line this cable back up and just smush it back down into place, okay? Just like that, okay? Um, now we're just gonna put the bottom cover back on. Again, we're not, really fixing this computer. The customer got liquid damage on it. They just wanted their data. They said they'll just buy a new computer. Um, so yeah, all right. Um, there's still some dust here. Not that it matters again because we aren't really fixing it, but uh, I don't know. I just don't like seeing all that dust in there. At least, at least we'll get rid of some of it. All right, anyways, now we can flip this back over and here you can see actually where the clips are here. The clips are on the sides here, and then you got a clip here. Um, so we're gonna put the bottom side down in first. Okay, once you get that, you can work your way to the sides, and then you can work your way up here. Um, it is a little bit tricky. It looks like it's not staying snapped in right. Oops, so I'm gonna have to kind of hold this in place. All right, and then while I'm kind of holding that side down, I guess we'll work up the sides and hopefully it will stay all right, and hopefully that will work. Yeah, and I don't know if there's a little, there looked like there's a little clip in the middle down here. So I'm going to see if I pull this up slightly and then while holding this so it flexes like that and then let it go back down like that. And hopefully that will get that clip into place. Are there clips over here too? I don't think so. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, so here you can see if I try and pull it, it's now holding in the center here like it should. Okay, and that's how we know we got it in right. Let's go ahead and get these screws back in. Since we're using the PH0 still, let's go ahead and get the bottom corner screws in first. Okay, that one. And this one. All right, now that we got that, let's go ahead and see about oops, putting this back on. Um, I don't know if there's any right side up or upside down. Um, I guess as long as you make sure these little marks line up, you can see where it let, had the holes before. And then we're going to put that. I, didn't, I don't want to try putting it upside down because I know this is the right way. Um, all right, so just get that lined up. And then just work your way all the way down. If you want, you can kind of go to the other corner here as well, the other edge, to make sure everything's lined up. And then you can just work your way in towards the center. Sometimes that's important when this rubber stuff stretches, but the plastic um, adhesive they put underneath actually holds really well. It doesn't really stretch, so I don't think it should be an issue. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the PH1 or JS1 screws in now. There's four screws along the top. And again, I'm just leaving the SSD out because I am going to try and get the data off it later once they look up their Microsoft account and get the... BitLocker password, excuse me. Okay, so we'll get all of that in. Get this last one in here. Okay. Just in 
get it all lined up. It's being weird. I get go in the slot. Okay, this one because it broke is gonna be weird. So let's go ahead and try and get this side in first. And then we can hopefully push it down to kind of even it out. Alright, this one the rubber's not really sticking to the adhesive well, so it's weird shaped. But uh can't really do much about that. Alright, it looks like even the side that didn't peel up got was like weird. Alright, anyways, there we go. Other than this little dirt thing, there we go. Okay, so it should be good. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out, at least to open it up. You can upgrade the SSD. There's not much else. You can change the battery, the trackpad, touchpad, whatever you want to call it, and the four speakers. Um, the other speakers towards the um, inside where the hinge are, um, you do have to remove the motherboard. The power button, I guess you can probably remove without removing the motherboard. There was one screw, but I didn't want to mess around with it too much. You can probably tell by looking at the parts. Um, anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.